Hello, class. I'm going to finish 3.3 uh, measures of position from our stat class in our stat books on page um, 84. Okay. And so if we look at this page, let's see what we have here. So we have measures of position. We have examples of perc uh, percentiles. So percentiles separate uh, the data into into 100 equal groups. Okay. Uh, percentile rank for a datum represents the percentage of data values below the datum. Okay. And then it says uh, percentiles are symbolized by p sub one or p sub two or p sub three, all the way to some p sub n. Actually, they have p of 99 here and divide the distribution into 100 groups. Okay, so if you look, let me increase this here. So the smallest data value that from 1% all the way up to largest data value. So these are all equally 1%. And then they've got P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, dot, 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 all the way to P97, right? P98, P99, okay. And then we have this um, formula, percentile formula, the percentile corresponding to a given value X is computed by the following. So we have a percentile is equal to the number of values below X plus 0 0.05 or plus 0.5, 5 tenths divided by the total number of values times 100, okay? All right, so here it says examples 3-30 uh, test scores. A teacher gives a 20-point test to 10 students. Find the percentile rank of a score of 12, okay? All right. So then let me go ahead and fill in There's lots of vocabulary on this page. Okay, so let's see. So first of all, I have a note here. Right here where it says below the datum. Let's add in here in parentheses uh, below the specific rank. And then I have an example here that 25th percentile. Can be written like this P subscript P subscript 25. Okay, and then I have um, Let's see Some steps. Okay, so I'm going to add a definition at the top. So I'm going to say um, at the top, I'm going to say percentiles. Or position me measures. Used in educational and in health related fields to indicate the position of an individual in a group.
The other thing I have a note here, I'm going to add this right here, this extra bullet. I'm going to say that um, when when the data set is at least a hundred data values. So when the data set is at least a hundred data values, then better results are yielded. So making sure I'm writing down my name. And I'm gonna write down some steps. Okay, let me just make sure I have everything though. Let's see. So it looks like I needed one more sentence over here tied back to this. Let's see. Yeah, I should have added also that percentiles are used to compare an individual's test score with the national norm. So let me see where can where can I add that? I think I can add that here. So percentiles are used to compare an individual's an individual's test scores, an individual's test score with the national norm. Okay. All right, so now let's see. So you got that written down, let's see. Okay, hopefully you, hopefully you got that down. Now you can pause the screen and, and record that. Okay, hopefully you got that down. And I'm gonna add now some steps for the percentile rank. And let me, let me just grab a Kleenex, I'll be right back.
Okay, class, I'm back. All right, so let's see. So as far as the steps go, I'm going to have, I'm going to say that we want to, to do this, to find the percentile rank. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put rank underneath here. Okay, and I'm going to say, I'm going to put up here, find the percentile rank of a data value X by the percentile rank of a data value X. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to sort the data in ascending order. Okay, so I'll put the steps here. One, sort data in ascending order. Sort data in ascending order. And that means small, too large, okay? Not, not descending, but ascending, so small to large. Okay, then number two, uh, we're going to substitute into the formula, formula Substitute into the formula, okay? And then right here, I'm going to put here, let's see, equals, this equals, question mark, and then percentage. So because you're doing times 100, it's going to be uh, in a percentage here times 100, and I'm going to put in total number of values divided by n, call that n. And then as far as rounding goes, I have a note here to round to the whole or the ones place value. So I'm going to put here round to the whole which is the same as the ones place value. And of course that's if, if, if applicable. So like if there's a need to round, right? Okay. Okay, so then let's do that. So a teacher gives a 20-point test to 10 students, okay? Find the percentile rank of a score of 12. So you want to put these in order from smallest to largest. Remember, you can, you can always enter your data. You could, you could enter your data in L1. and then you could sort it. So I go to stat, edit, go up to the top, clear, and then I start typing this in, so 18, 15, Double checking my data. Okay, looks good. 
Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to sort it. So I'm going to go to stat. So after you enter your data in L1, then I'm going to go to stat and number two. We look at number two, it says sort A. So I hit number two. And I'm going to identify my column where my data is at, okay? So it's in L1, so I'm going to press second, and then the number one. So I'm going to do second, number one, and then just hit enter. And then when I go back and look at my data stat, it is... So it's supposed to put it in order from smallest to largest. So I just have here, enter data in L1, stat, number, hit number two for sort A, tell the column, it's gonna sort L1, enter, and then I'm taking a look at it. And let me look at my numbers now, it should show that it put it in order from smallest to largest. So see there's two, three, Five, six, eight, ten, twelve. Excuse me. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty. Okay, that was like the tenth data value. So I could double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, yeah, so I didn't forget any. Okay, so then um, we're going to take the formula percentile rank. Equals. Excuse me, the formula is number of values below x plus 0 0.5 all over total number of values and then times 100%. Okay, so let's see. So the number of values below X. So let's see. We're trying to find a, a teacher gives a 20-point test to 10 students. Find the percentile rank of a score of 12. Okay, so here's our, here's our score of 12, right? Right here. Okay, and you want to count the number of values below X. So if I count that, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six of them. And total number of values, we said there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And time is 100%. Okay, so then it looks like that's 6.5 divided by 10 times 100%. Okay. And so if I use that on my calculator, let's see what that gives me. So here I can do, I can do a quit. Here I can do a, a second quit. Let me write that down. A second and then a quit.
sick and quit. And it takes me back to my calculator portion. So I'm going to do 6.5 divided by 10 times 100. 6.5 divided by 10 times 100 gives me 65. And since that's a percentile rank, I should put 65% is what I should put on that then. So see if I can check that, let me look and see. Okay, good. So that looks that looks good then. Okay. Um, let's see anything else to add at the top. Mm, looks good. Okay. And I think I just had this highlighted here. The twelve highlighted. And it said score of twelve right here. So you want the number of values that were below your your x, and this is. Our x is right here, 12. This tells us right here what our x is. And so when I count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, 6 plus 0.5 divided by n and then times 100. OK. And then if I make a, write a comment, I can say, I can say something like this, the subject with the related data value 12, they did better than 65% of the group who took the test, okay? So let me write that down somewhere, let's see. I guess I can, I guess I can write it here, so let's see. Here. So the subject with the subject with the related data value twelve. They did better than 65% of the group who took the tests, okay? So when you when you write these sentences, um, you just you you can keep the same sentence. You're just going to be replacing right your data value and the percentage. That's really all we can do. So the subject with related data value twelve, they did better than sixty five percent of the group. Who actually took the test? Okay. Okay. All right. And then it looks like it looks like we're doing practicing again. But this time, they want the percentile rank for a score of 6. First, it was a score of 12 up here, right? Now it's a score of 6, OK? So percentile 
Bridget Tauerich equals, okay. Now, since, since we just wrote the formula, you know, we have the formula here. Okay. And then I just wrote it down here again. So I don't feel like we have a need to write it again here. Um, and on the test, on the test, your teacher want like the the symbol, the formula, you know, the the symbol, the the formula, the substitutions. But but then you know after after you've written the formula, there's not a need to like write it again and form again, we just have it right here, right? So it's a number of values below x. So you want a score of six. Okay, so then we're looking over here at our data. Don't, don't look here, because this one's not a range. Look here. So here's our data value. At least I can change the ink on that. For score six. So here's six, see right here? See that? Okay. So number of values below x, one, two, three, right? Number of values below x, one, two. So these are x's. Okay. So one, two, three, right? Number of values below x. One, two, three, okay? So this one's three, and it's always plus 0.5 divided by the total number of n. Okay, well, we still have 10, still 10 data values, and times 100. Okay, so then this is 3.5. Math those parentheses. 3.5 divided by 10 times 100. And it looks like that gives us 35%. You see that here? 3.5 divided by 10 times 100. If you also wanted to go this way, 3.5 times 100, and then divided by 10, this should also work out, okay? So 3.5 times 100, and then divided by 10, that will also work out, okay? So it's thirty five percent. So then you would you would say something like this again, but you just change your data value was six, right? And then the percentage. So the subject with the related data value. So the subject with the related data value. And that would be um, six, right? This is six, right? They did better. They did better than 35% of the group who also took the test, right? OK. 
Okay, let's write that down. So I also have a note to put to hope is just to, to say something like um, here to say that right here that there are three values so there are three values below below six, right? This is six on this problem. Excuse me. There are three values below six. Okay, same thing over here. See number of values below x. So it looks like this was six. This one had six values. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one had six values. Six values below x. Whereas this one has three values below x. Okay. Okay. So so yeah. So we just on these we put them in order from uh, smallest to largest. And then you just identify how many number of values are below your your um, your data value that's needed here. Okay. Then you just substitute it into the unknown the numerator. Okay. And then divide that by ten. There's n, and then times a hundred. Okay. We made that we made that a percentage. Round it to the nearest. Um, round it to the nearest. Where do we put that? Round it to the nearest um, ones place value. Yeah. So we left this one sixty-five and this one thirty-five. Okay. Okay. All right. So it takes care of that problem. Look at your other problems. Let's see. Go to page eighty five. Let's go to page eighty five. Okay. Okay, so what's going on here? So this says that the average weekly earnings in dollars for various industries are listed below. Find the percentile rank of, of each value around the nearest whole percentile. Okay. So we won't we won't do it for each one. We'll just we'll just do it for one value. Let's see. Does it matter which one I do? Let's see. I don't I think it does. So find the percentile rank of. Let's do. Um, I'm just gonna pick one now. Let's just pick seven twenty-eight.
Okay, so find the percentile rank. 728. Round to nearest whole percentile. Okay, there's whole. Okay. So I'm going to take off this dollar sign. I don't think I need it here. Okay, so this is another percentile rank. Then we just got out of the percentile rank. So remember, we had to put it in order. Remember, from smallest to largest. Let's see if we can do it without the calculator. So this goes first, right? And then this goes second. And this goes third, 693. And then 728. Seven sixty-eight. Okay. All right, so I put an order from smallest to largest. Okay. So percentile rank. And then remember the remember the formula that we use. So we want uh, the number of values below x over total number of values in. And then it was times a hundred percent. Okay. So number values below X. So we're using 728. I just randomly picked out 728. 728 is right here. So when I count the values that are below that, I have one, two, three. See? One, two, three. So this is going to be three, and remember part of the formula is point plus point five, so it's three point five divided by the total number. So this is going to have one, two, three, four, five. Times a hundred percent. Okay. So now I have 3.5 divided by 5 times 100. So that's going to equal, see how I 3.5 divided by 5 times a hundred times a hundred percent. Is equal to see that seventy. So what that means is that, um, let's see, 70% 70, 70 right, so the subject with this related value it is better than 75% than of the group, okay.
Let me look, let me see how I worded that just to make sure. It does say here that the percentile rank of the value. Oh, they use they used uh, six thirty five is what they use, but I had I had chose seven twenty eight, so I'm just going to just change it here. And the percentile rank is is going to be, in this case, it's seventy percentile. Okay. Let's see, I'm thinking about if I have to write a sentence here, let me think about how I put that. Because the other one said that the subject with the related data value 12 they did better than 65% of the group who took the test. These people aren't taking the test, so run to the nearest hole. That was already a hole right there. The average weekly earnings in dollars for various industries is listed below find the percentile rank. Okay. And these are earnings. So I can say something like um, the industry, right? The industry with the with the related and this is average weekly earnings. So the industry with the related data value, and that would be 728, right? And what we'll say they did is um, they paid better. Over here, it was, um, they took a test, right? So over here, they did better because they took a test. Here, they pay, got paid, they paid better. Here, they paid better. Then seventy percent. Of the industries. Who participated. Some, something to that effect, okay? To write a sentence for that 70%. And again, I just, in pink, I just, I just chose a 728. I just chose that, okay? Okay, we got that written down. All right, so there's three percentile ranks there, okay? All right, so now, let's see, we go on to the next one. So, so I got that accounted for. So it says finding a data value corresponding to a given percentile now. Arranged, okay, this is good because these have the steps here at least. So I don't have to write those out. It's got them here. 
you do want to arrange the data in order from lowest to highest, which we, we did on the previous percentile rank problems. You want to substitute into the formula. Okay, so we had a we had a formula also. Remember, this was a different one. C is equal to n times p times a hundred where n is equal to the total number of values and p refers to the percentile. So that's very helpful for us to know that. Okay. And you know, c stands for the corresponding, right? It's finding, this is called finding a data value corresponding to a given percentile. So the c is a, a corresponding Corresponding, that's what the C is for. Corresponds to a given percentile. Okay, so, so we arrange the data in order from lowest to highest, and then here's our formula, okay? And then we plug in what we know. And then 3a, if c is not a whole number, round it up to the nearest um, whole number, starting at least, so starting at the lowest right value, count over to the influence, <laughs> count over to the number that corresponds to the rounded up value. So there's two cases. Part B says if the C is a whole number, use the value halfway between um, the C and that, that, that next position. C, C should be C plus one, I believe. First value when, when counting up from the house level. Okay. So let's see, a teacher gives a 20 point test to 10 students. Say so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so those are those test scores. Find a value corresponding to the 25th percentile. So you do have to do some kind of sorting and you, you do have to uh, sorts of data from lowest to highest. Okay, so you can tell here that they sorted it, right? They sorted this data here. They probably put it into the calculator. They probably entered in Cal 1, enter in L1. And they sorted it from smallest to largest ascending order. So this is the smallest. So that's the largest, okay? And and then they put that in order, okay? So that was step one, arrange the data in order from lowest to highest. Number two, substitute into the formula. So they were, um, just remember you wanna rely on the symbol for steadiness, right? For always, uh, Always, um, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm off task, aren't I? Sorry about that. Um, so we're putting an order from smallest to largest. Okay, here's our formula. C is equal to N times P divided by 100. Okay, N, remember, stands for the number, total number of values. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So n is equal to ten. Here's n right here. P is the remember the percentile. So P right here is the percentile. And it's C right here, 25th percentile. So there's n times P. So it's 10 times 25. 
divide it by 100. So we cannot change this part of the formula. This is, you know, this is always going to be divided by 100 as part of the formula. We cannot change that, okay? But then when I use my calculator on this, let's see, 10 times 25 divided by 100. And that worked out for us, didn't it match? It's 2.5. And look what they did. They they rounded up to the nearest hole. Okay, so where did it say that where did it say that about the rounding part? Let's see. So it's 2.5. Okay, so it says right here, either C is a whole number, which for us it wasn't more down here. See? If C is a whole number. Okay, if C is not a whole number, that's what we want. This one, 3A. Use 3A. Which says that if C is not a whole number, and, and you see we got, we got 2.5, you're supposed to round up to the nearest whole number. Okay, so, so remember 2.5, is between 2 and 3, right? 2.5 is a decimal between 2 and 3. So when you have instructions to round up, that means we're going to we're going to go with 3 round up. Okay? And that's, that's what we're doing here. C is not a whole number, round up to the next whole number, starting at the lowest value count over the number that corresponds to the rounding, rounded up value. Okay, so this was, this was 2.5, it wasn't a whole number, so I'm gonna put not, not a whole number. So you're going to round up. And we round that up to three, okay? Okay. And then we're not, um, we're not done. That's our C course. That's our corresponding value. So you want the, the third one, okay? We're, so here it says we're three. See that cave from here, right here? So where three corresponds to the third value. So we're talking about in this list here, right? In this list, three corresponds to third value. So they sorted it from smallest to largest and they got one, two, three. B, B corresponds to the third value. So I'll go back one, two, three. So this is first, this one's second, this one's third, third value. So the worst third, three corresponds to the third value. So the value five is the greater percentile. So the reason why they're getting five is because if they go back and they count three corresponds to the third value, three. So I go to the, the ascending order, which is here. Three corresponds to the third value. Well, so it was three, three corresponds to the third value.
Yeah, so three core sponsored third value. Yeah, so one, two, three. So we're looking at this right here. That's really getting that from, so the value five. Value five is going to be the 25th quartile is what they're saying. Value five is going to be the 25th quartile. And then I'm also going to say that um, anyone scoring a five, that means that they would have done better than 25% of the class. They would have been done better than 25% than of, of the class. Okay, so let's see. So this is an example of 3A we said, right class? If C was not a whole number and um, we got 2.5, we had to round up to the next whole number. And then count the lower value, count over to the number that corresponds to the rounded value. So that was that was three A. What I probably should do now is look for the, an example of three B. Then correct, because this was an example of of three A, right? So. On step 3b, it says if c is a whole number, use the vocabulary halfway between the, between looking at this here, between the c -th and the c plus values when counting up from the lowest. Not sure what they mean by that with the C. Okay. Okay, so all right, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and pause here, class. Apologize. I need to take a little break. I'm sorry. But I hope I hope that made sense on this one. We had to put it in order from smallest to largest. I had to find the corresponding value, so you need this formula because of the C, okay? N was the amount of data, P was the percentile, was 25th percentile, divided by 100. And then and then what happened was um, our original problem, 2.5, we had 2.5, we had to uh, round that up to 3.
You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here for a second, and I'm going. To, sorry about that. I'm gonna pause here for a second, and then when we come back on the next part of the video, I will find one where where this is happening. You see, is a whole number. Okay. I actually think I should just go to the next page because I think it's showing you an example of 3B on the next page. Sorry about that. Let's see. It's late. That's why I'm getting tired because it's late already. Let's see. Okay, let's see what's happening here. So using the data set from example 3-30. Okay, so that's... Find the value that corresponds to the 60th percentile. Okay, so they have their data here. And does it look like it's in order from smallest to largest? Let's see. Oh yeah, they, they fixed it here. They put it in order from smallest to largest here. Okay, so here's your formula, C for corresponding value. There's your keyword here. This one also has 60th percentile. So N, let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, from the previous problem. And then your percentile P is 60, 60th percentile. So you see N times P, 10 times 60 divided by 100. Yeah, so if I show that here, Ten times sixty, and then divided by hundred to get six. Okay, and that's that's we're going to use step three B. You see, is a whole number. Use the value halfway between. The C and the plus sign. Because otherwise, those might be the next values when counting from the lowest to the newest, near, near, next one. Okay, so this was six, like they said. So we're using 3B. It's a whole number. We use 3B in case it's a whole number, and then we're going to use the value halfway between the C and the C plus 1. Okay, 
and they tell you this here, C is a whole number, use the value halfway between the value C and C plus one value when counting up from the lowest value, in this case, six and seven values. So you have to go ahead and, and do that. So you, you notice here, here they have the value from smallest to largest. And right here is the six value, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's the six value that's coming from here. And then they have to take the next one, n plus one. Right, or they said c plus one. So this is like the c value. And this is like the c plus one value. <clears throat> so six and then six plus one, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then six plus one is seven, seventh value inside the inside that. Okay. Fine. It says it said find the lowest value in this case, six and seventh. Six and seventh, okay. Yeah, so it's like you're gonna um, take the average of that. Yeah, see the midpoint, the midpoint formula to get to the value halfway between 10 and 12. Yeah, so you're gonna do like the midpoint for that. <clears throat> so 10 plus 12 divided by two. <clears throat> Ten plus twelve is twenty-two. Divided by two is eleven. And it says here eleven corresponds to the sixtieth percentile. Okay, anyone scoring an eleven would have done better than sixty percent of the class. So you see how that's related? See how that's related to what we're doing here? And that's the 60% that was coming from here, okay? Okay. Okay, so just be careful on that one because on you have two steps, a three A and a three B. So you want to be careful. This this second example was the one using three B. So if C is a whole number and it, it was C is a whole number of six over here, use the value be halfway between the C column.
Okay, class, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the video here. Sorry about that. Then I come back, when I come back for the third part, we'll talk about the remaining. I think there's an 86, 87 remaining. Okay.